Here we're going to look at 2017, question 3, part A. Now, at a glance, this question isn't the prettiest question in the world, the big square root of 9GH. But don't worry about that, because these things tend to disappear and, and cancel themselves out. So a particle is thrown off a cliff, strikes the ground a bit further away. All right, we're not given the angle, and we need to look at two possible angles. This question is a little bit interesting, because they actually made a mistake in the question. If you look in part two, for each angle, angle projection, we're looking for, in terms of H, the time it takes the particle to hit the ground. Okay, so you'll see it in the marking schemes, but we'll just cross it out now, and we know to go ahead. So let's look at this in part one. So first of all, like everything, we're going to start drawing a diagram. So there is a little cliff and the ground. So we start here at P, and our particle is launched off the cliff. This is H high, and this is 3H, not quite to scale, but we get the idea. Now this particle is either going to go down like that, or up and down like that. So we can see we have two different possible angles coming off. Well, let's have a little look at this. Again, we're going to break this into the x and y directions here to figure this out. So in the x direction, okay, ui, which is our vector in the x direction, is square root of 9gh all over 2. So that's u, the, the overall initial speed, by the um, cos of alpha. I'm going to call our little angle up here the unknown alpha. Okay, so using s equals ut plus a half at squared, no acceleration, we know that 3h is equal to all of this guy here, square root of 9gh over 2 cos alpha by t. Okay, rearrange that and we're going to get a nice expression for t where t is 3h all over square root of 9gh over 2 cos alpha. Now, I know I could begin to do a little bit of cancellation here. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to hope things cancel out a little bit more neatly later on when I go to sub it into the second equation. Okay, so y directions. We're going to come up here for the y direction. So again, uj is just going to be u sine alpha, which in this case is the square root of 9gh over 2 sine alpha. Using our equation, s equals ut plus half, half at squares. We are going to know that now. What's our s here? It's important to know that this, if this is our starting point, it's actually a negative distance. It's going down. So s is minus h. Okay. The, later on, this will begin to, if you made a mistake there, you might pick it up as a bit of a mess, but it's always a place to go back and check, are you getting your direction vectors right? So uh, minus h is the carbon equation, 9gh over 2 sine alpha t, okay, plus a half minus g, since down is negative, and t squared, t squared. Okay, now let's do a bit of tidying on this one. Minus h equals 9gh over 2. Let's see, can we get our pen a little bit happier? Well, that pen, blue pen, has tragically died, so we're going to switch to black for the remainder. Sine alpha t minus g over 2, t squared. Okay, so now it's time to take this t and substitute it in here. So, minus h. Square root of 9gh over 2 
sine alpha by t, which of course is 3h. Now you begin to see where our cancellation is going to work out. Cos alpha minus g over 2. Okay, and that's all squared. We're just going to tidy up some of the mess down here. Okay, so let's see, can we begin to make this a little less horrible? Keeping minus h over here. Okay, we'll actually, we'll pause for a moment and just cancel, cancel. Get rid of that stuff across the board and multiply that out before I start canceling in case I make small mistakes. So we end up with, in black of course, equals 3h sine alpha over cos alpha, which is going to be tan alpha, but we'll come to that in a moment, minus g over 2. Let's multiply this guy out. 9h squared all over 9gh over 2 cos squared alpha. Okay, we've got some cancellations coming up at a glance straight away. I can see that that's going to go, that's going to go. I'm not going to worry about that one. I'm going to tidy that up before I do anything weird with it, just so we don't make mistakes. So we have cos 3h sine alpha over cos alpha. Now, what we're going to do with this one, a way to think about this is to multiply above and below by 2. Okay, so this is going to end up being 1 over 2, all right, multiplied by 2h squared over h by 1 over cos squared alpha. All right, now we can see there's some cancellation to, to happen here. That's going to go and that's going to go. Okay, now I'm going to turn to a new sheet to keep this thing going. So what we end up here is minus h equals cos alpha, that's going to reduce. And what am I left with when I look at all the other bits and pieces this nice big mess here, I'm left with H, okay? Factor of one over cos squared alpha. What did I leave the H out? Well, again, all the H's can go. So we'll just cancel out H there, H there, H there. This is looking a little bit tidier. Now, so just for, for the sake of convenience here, we're going to um, put this into minus 1 equals 3 sine alpha Okay, so you may be familiar with these questions and realize how we're going to get out of this one If not, we need to go to our log tables Now go into your log tables. If you look there, you'll see that sine alpha over cos alpha is just tan alpha all right, so we can come back to our drawing here, equals 3 tan alpha. Now, this one might be a little bit messier, but again, if we look at the tables, we'll see that 1 over cos alpha is, is sec alpha, S-E-C, uh, all right? And of course, 1 over cos squared alpha is secant squared alpha. And that ten, turns out is equal to 1 plus tan squared alpha. Okay, they're in your log tables. This one is worth knowing. It does come up a fair bit in this question. Okay, save you a little bit of hassle going back and forth. So now, once we're back to this, we have a quadratic. All right, a little bit of rearranging, a bit of housekeeping. So I'm just going to multiply this guy out first. 3 tan alpha minus 1 minus tan squared alpha. Bring everything over to this side here. So I get the tan 
squared alpha positive, tan squared alpha minus 3 tan alpha. And I have the minus 1 going across here. And that's just going to be 0 equals 0. So this is actually quite straightforward to solve. We basically have tan alpha factor of tan alpha minus 3. In this case, tan alpha will equal either 0 or 3. Okay, so flipping that around, that means alpha equals tan inverse of 0, tan inverse of 3. So alpha equals, I'm going to stick this into our calculator. Now you may or may not know the tan inverse is 0, but that's fine. We'll stick it in, tan inverse 0, it takes a moment to check, it's of course 0. And then tan inverse 3 is 71.565. So alpha is 0, 71.57 degrees. Those are our two possible angles. Now let's finish off the last bit of... 2017, question 3, part A, part 2. So remembering this is the one with a little bit of a mistake in it, but we have our particle is going to hit the ground. Okay, so there's a particle up on our cliff, and it's going to fire off at one of these two angles, up and down, or across and down. And we are looking for the time it takes to get to the ground here, in which case it's moving by 3h. Okay, well earlier on in the question we figured out that for our um, looking in our x direction the time is 3h over the um, speed in the x direction u cos alpha which was a nice horrible number of 9gh over 2 by cos of alpha which is the angle that it leaves at. All right, so in this question, all we really got to do is sub in our two different values for alpha, deal with a bit of Harvard algebra, and away we go. All right, now in this question, I'm going to answer them across this way because they're a bit long and messy. So for alpha equals zero, which is our first value we got, well, the time is 3h all over root 9gh over 2 by the cos of zero. Look at the cost of 0 and it turns out to be 1, so this gets a little bit easier. All right. Now, I've got all these horrible kind of squares and not squares, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the whole thing into a bracket. Okay, so we'll square, I'll just write this out in a couple of extra steps so you can see where I'm going. Root of 9h squared, of course 3h, all over root of 9gh over 2 by 1. Okay, so that's not so bad. And again, tidying that up and making it a little easier to read in a big bracket here, 9h squared all over 9gh all over 2. Okay, so deal with the 2 in a moment. Before we do that, let's make life easier because we can cancel the 9s, cancel that h, and that cancels out that h squared. All right, so it's getting a little bit nicer here. So that is going to equal x squared root sign, um, h over g over h. Handiest way to tidy all this one up is to just multiply both sides above and below by 2. So that equals the square root of 2h over g. There we are, time in terms of g. So let's look at the second one. Now, alpha equals 71.57 degrees. You may have seen this angle a little bit before, and before we lash into it, it's worth thinking a bit about where this one came from, okay? In this case, we'll just do a little side box down here, okay? So the tan of, the, of alpha here is 3 for alpha equals 71.57, okay? Which means, if we look at the angle, opposite or adjacent, that's 3, that's 1. Quick bit of Pythagoras, and you realize that the square root of this is 9 plus 1, so that is the root of 10. Okay, 
So in this case, that's alpha there. We are going to want the cos of alpha, and the cos of alpha equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse is 1 over root 10. All right. Just makes it a bit easier to keep like this one. Otherwise, if we started going to this one, we'd be getting rounding errors, we weird numbers, and you're having to deal with decimals all the time. This is going to keep it a small bit simpler. So coming back to all this one, time equals 3h all over square root of our nice big horrible one, 9gh over 2, by the cost of 71.57. Okay, we'll put that in so we can show where, we're, where things are going. Now, let's begin to tidy it all up. Like above, I'm going to put this into a, a root. So that is 9h squared all over 9gh over 2. And this one here is 1 over root 10, which we can actually also write like that. It's a little bit easier. Now, let's merge all this into one big bracket, just to make sure we're not making any small mistakes. There we go. 9h squared all over 9gh over 20. Cancel. That is h over g over 20, multiply by below from below by 20. We just pop it down this other line here because we're running out of space. And t is square root of 20h over g. And that is our second time value in terms of h.